Welcome to Rebel Speak and be encouraged. And today I'm going to read uh, some beautiful verses from Psalm 24. And it's a it's a it's a psalm of King David, who is kind of the. It's like it says that this king was a man after God's own heart. That in King David we see a human who is very human, who is never afraid to go to God, who understands somehow in David's life. There's a knowledge that no matter how much he's messed up or gotten things wrong or right, that God is for him, not against him. And God's the safest place to be, right? Like when things go wrong, when you've caused things going wrong, God's the safest place to be. David gets that so uniquely. David gets God's heart and David's not afraid of God. And um, it, it makes David very beautiful, very compelling. He's a very compelling person. Far, far away in the Old Testament, this man who always knows that God's righteousness will cover him. Um, it, it, it keeps him from hiding, right? Sometimes it's easy to hide from God. David doesn't hide from God. Uh, he, he, he sins, <laughs> but he doesn't in a way that, um, he doesn't hide from God in a way that does permanent damage to his relationship with God. And um, in this psalm, it's a, he, he's just declaring, kind of talking about righteousness. And we as Christians live within the righteousness of Christ. Christ died that we can, that, that the, the perfection of Christ's righteousness are the clothes that we wear, that we're not stuck in our sins and we're not stuck in our circumstances. And what I feel today, what I want to speak to today, are places in our life that feel deeply uh, disadvantaged, perhaps deeply misunderstood. Um, there's that word familiar, and the word familiar is related to family. And situations that feel Like so deeply established in our life that there's, it feels like there's no way around them. Things maybe with our family, familiar, family, maybe things that are in our nation, um, things in our country, which is nation, but uh, just things that we might care a lot about. Like I care so much about it, but it feels so stuck. It can be dynamics in our own life. like. You go and you visit your family. I, don't, I remember when I was a lot younger, and you'd go home, and oh, there'd be these dynamics that you thought were over, and there they would. They're so familiar. <laughs> they're so familiar, and they're and they're frustrating, right? Ways of coping or ways of seeing yourself that just feel stuck. Circumstances that feel stuck, and and I feel it could also be circumstances that in situations we're praying for, like um, our nation. Um, Mm, I, I just feel um, places where we, I'm sorry, long, long to see things differently. And it's like, I think this is never going to be different. I think this is so stuck. It's so rooted. It's so, and I just want to say that, so stuck in the familiar in a way that it's, it's long devastated. Like, I don't, I just can't see this moving. I don't see the dial moving or turning. And I, I don't really want to give a lot of time. I, I'd rather almost ignore it than give it a lot of time and attention because it will just take everything from me. And, and sometimes that's wisdom, but sometimes there's places God's having us pray into that we can feel that long established darkness that the situation is routinized. It, there's something about it that's so routine that it, it feels bigger than our prayers. And I want to read these verses from Psalm 24 into such situations and circumstances in your life and my life, places that God is setting free, places that have us actually more isolated than we realize. Like you, we actually think we're coping, but we're isolating. And, and so it's this imagery of gates. Open up ancient gates. Open up ancient doors and let the King of Glory enter. And so these places that, if you think of an ancient gate, it's kind of stuck. It's, it's been around a long time, okay? Ancient doors, ancient gates, oh, they're, they're rusted, you know? They're, 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 they, have a, they almost feel like, oh, they're too, they're too set in their ways. It's, it's too hard to get them to open up. 
And here's this speaking, open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter in. There's something, God wants to abide. God wants to abide in these ancient places. God wants to bring change. And I feel like I want to say God wants to bring validation to the yearnings of your heart into places that feel too big for God to be able to change and fix. Like there's something in you that's yearning for the change, but it's almost easier to isolate. I've already said that, but to isolate from that yearning versus say, hey, God, can you come into this circumstance? I so want, I so want my relationship with my mom different. I, I so want this situation to not be named by these dynamics. I so want something different. It, it feels, the, the stuckness of it feels like a gate that is ancient and shut and cannot be open. And I want to encourage you. I want to, I just feel like validate that, that that's a cry of, of your heart. That's a prayer in you. That's not a that's not a point of frustration that's doomed to never come to fruition. That's a, that's a meaningful prayer inside of your life. And I want to encourage you to continue to pray that prayer, to speak to those gates, open up. Because God in God's mercy uh, wants to come in and, and speak an invitation. Come in, come in, come in, Jesus. Come in, come in, <laughs> loving Father. Come in, living God. King of glory, come be glorified. In a, I just feel like a villainous. What a what a weird word, but I have that word. A vil, there's something about the circumstance that feels kind of vile, and like invite God into it. Like oh, but it's so deep and it's so dark. There's no light. How do I? There's no hope. No, invite God in. He'll bring the hope. He'll bring the hope with him. Invite God in. Who is the King of glory? And here's. The Lord, strong and mighty. See, Yahweh is stronger than you. He's stronger than me. He can walk into these circumstances. He, he can um, get, you know, stones worship. In his presence, stones cry out. <laughs> the very presence of God brings new realities to old, 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 set in their way circumstances. The very presence of God. The Lord strong and mighty, and this is the, the line that really spoke to my heart as I was praying. Yahweh, the one who's invincible in battle. These situations that feel invincible, no, it's Yahweh that's invincible. They're not invincible. Yahweh's invincible, and he likes to fight on our behalf. It's an amazing, this Yahweh, God is not this far away, distant God that's not interested in the deep, long, devastated places of our life that feel like they're never going to be brought to fruition. That word fruition means fruit, right? They're, they're never going to be brought to light. There's not going to ever be fruit there. It's hopeless. I've tried a thousand times to have that conversation. There's no way. And I just want to say no. The Lord Almighty is invincible in battle. And I want to bear witness to relationships and situations that for years felt routinized. For years, I, you'd kind of get your courage up and face them and ooh, it just would be beaten back down. And, and over the years, God has brought tremendous change to deeply long-held broken places in my life and in relationships with people that weren't right. That there's something about God that when we invite him into these situations and circumstances, God glorifies God's self in the midst of them. And that glory, that goodness, that righteousness and truth that are all part of God's glory are invincible. They're just at work. <laughs> it's just like God's at work changing things from that inside out, making them forever different and sweet. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the King of glory enter invite king of glory come on in I, I i'm so deeply discouraged and and i even feel like places that we're a little haunted by they just feel they're not what we want in our life but they feel bigger than us i'm kind of haunted by this thing i'm i'm haunted by this habit i'm haunted by this situation invite god in just keep inviting god in the one who's bigger god's bigger 
then this situation that's inhabiting your life, inhabiting your life, God's bigger. Keep inviting God in. Don't give up. <laughs> Invite that glory. Say, glory, come in. Don't think God says, okay, my glory was there. Can't you get it right? God's not. Um, pass the baton to God. Pass the baton and, and awaken your expectations as you do that. Say, God, I'm inviting you in because you are this king of glory. Let the king of glory enter. Who is the king of glory? Yahweh Almighty. Awaken your expectations. Just say, God, I believe that you in your kindness and goodness are invincible in battle. Places where I've lost the battle or my family's lost the battle or the dynamics seem bigger than... Uh, the dynamics feel bigger. The b battle feels impossible. But I say you, Yahweh, are invincible. You, Yahweh, are bigger than these impossible dynamics. And I turn to your goodness. Who is the King of Glory? Yahweh Almighty. He is the King of Glory. Who is this King of Goodness? Who is this King of Grace and Truth? One who is Almighty in battle. One whose arm is not too short to deliver, not too short to save. I want to encourage you. Take courage in God's goodness. You may have failed many times. I, I see kind of two different things. Places that have long been devastated in your life and it feels like you just are hopeless in facing them yet again. Invite the King of Glory, who's also almighty in battle. Invite him in. And then I also feel places where there's a yearning in your heart for a new and different dynamic in your family, um, in your church, in your congregation, where people congregate, come together in your life. Dynamics at play in people gathering together, congregating, congregation, churches, and it doesn't have to be churches. It could be friend groups, <laughs> places where people gather. And finally, you may be praying for your nation and wanting to see new dynamics. You might be wanting to see new racial dynamics, new things that it just feels like, no, they're set in motion. They're, they're ancient doors. Just keep speaking that awakening because God is awakening sleeping giants. <sighs> things are coming to life that have been immobile for a long time, and it's an exciting age that way. I hope this has encouraged you. God bless you. He is strong to deliver. I want to say that he is strong to deliver. Amen.